Toia mai te waka e kawe nei i a tātou kato o tēnei whenua tauri kura. Ko te pātaia, he waka aha tēnei waka, he waka haurua, he waka taua rā nei. Ko tēnei te kai waka kōrero o mata, e ahu atu nei ki te taha tū o whakaaro. Nau mai, piki mai. Welcome to Mata with me, Mehingarangi Forbes, brought to you by Te Māngai Pāho and the Public Interest Journalism Fund. Lots to talk about on the show tonight. Later we'll hear from Tau Henare and Kylie Quince on the anti-co-governance tour. Engari Mātua over the weekend, co uh, Green Party co-leaders delivered their State of the Planet speech in Tāmaki Makaurau, stating the Green Party will not accept anything less than the strongest possible climate action. They say the stakes are too high, the consequences of failure too great. A shot perhaps at the PM, who had just dumped a range of climate change policies without prior consultation with the Greens. Hoi anō me aha te pāti kākāriki, where does this leave the Green Party? Hei matapaki i nei take, I'm joined by co-leader Marama Davidson via Zoom. Tēnā i te kaiarahi nō te nōta me te tairāwhiti nō mai. Tēnā koe, tēnā koutou mihi. So what does faster and bolder climate change action look like? stronger action to reduce emissions, for example, from our transport area and from our agriculture area. And those are two of the biggest um, climate polluting activities here in Aotearoa. And there is a plan that the Greens um, have been calling for for years to be able to take stronger action in those places. You say that you are challenging other parties to come to the to the table with stronger, bolder um, kaupapa about the climate. So, you know, given that Labour's just dumped all of those policies, are they actually a party that's, you know, that you're willing to, to align with? We're being really clear that any future government will have to come to the table, to the Green Party, with a stronger action. That includes the Labour Party, any party. We want to influence the next direction of government, no matter who it is. So we're focused on more votes for the Green Party. So with, you know, where the Green Party is now, you came in with 10, um, you've had two, out, two, cabinet, two ministers outside of Cabinet. What kind of policies, you know, what's on your Skype list? What can you say that you've influenced over this last term? Having the first plan ever in Aotearoa history to reduce emissions, to reduce climate pollution, <laughs> that's the reduction um, emission plan, but also having the first ever national strategy, 25-year generational strategy to eliminate family violence and sexual violence, but in our non-ministerial areas as well, whether it's ending seabed mining, um, allowing Māori to choose when they want to change their roles and, and electoral roles, um, having support for birth injuries recognised, ending the conversion um, therapy uh, legislation, and so much more from both inside as ministers and our non-ministerial non MPs as well. You know, in your uh, cooperation agreement that you have with this current government, uh, there are some, some really staunch rules in there in terms of, um, you know, working together on some really big climate targets. But effectively, uh, the Prime Minister just got rid of them with no consultation. I mean, what did you say? You know, did you have a, a, a stern conversation with them? Pretty clear how frustrated and disappointed we are because while we're proud of what we've been able to achieve in five years on climate action, it's too slow and the progress is not fast enough. And we have only now, this is it, this is the time. We just had the... Um, independent, the big climate change report come out today, the IPCC, who have basically said, we're running out of time, but there is still hope to be able to do this, but it's now, and that's in our hands, that ability to make those changes is now or never. Did you consider, or would you consider quitting that cooperation deal? We're not giving up on the mahi. We know that people want to see the Greens continue to do our ministerial mahi and our cooperation agreement mahi. So we're not giving up, but we're being really, really clear. This is a climate election. Our whanau all around Aotearoa are being hammered in many ways, and it is only the Greens who will bring that strong priority for climate action to the table. But how do you continue in a relationship in a 
in a re relationship where the other side's not cooperating with you, where they just blatantly, you know, drop all of your policies. Where is, I mean, what do you tell your voters, the people who got you in there in the first place? Where should, you know, where's the direction of the Greens? To party vote for more Green MPs, to have more influence at the Cabinet table. It was a Cabinet decision. Had we been at the Cabinet table with more numbers, we'd be able to stop um, the bad decisions and see more of the strong decisions. And so that is what we're telling voters. Again, it's only because of James as a co uh, as a climate minister that we've had more action in five years than we've seen in 30 years on climate change. But we still know it's not enough. And we're urging people to make that choice that's in their hands to have a strong climate action government, the next direction, the next government with the Greens. Why would Māori voters vote for you over, say, the Māori Party? We've worked well with the Māori Party over many years and align on many things. We're not a Māori party. We're a tauwiwi and treaty partner political party. And we're really proud of having Tiriti as our founding document, as our part of our charter. But we're able to um, prioritise from a, a broader point of view, which I think adds strength and value to Kaupapa Māori aspirations. Um, we're able to keep our focus on climate action, protecting the paiao and making sure everyone has enough to live with dignity. And those embrace our kaupapa Māori aspirations as well for our people, but we also are able to have a broader focus as well. You uh, talked about the party vote just before, um, yet you're standing some high profile candidates in places like Wellington Central with Tamitha Paul. Uh, as a wahine Māori, what do you think she's going to bring to politics? Oh, and also, Mihi, we can't forget uh, Tai Tokero as well with Huhana Linden. Uh, and I'm really proud of being able to attract such high calibre, high quality wahine um, to the Green Party. These are savvy, political, experienced, staunch wahine who also bring um, their, their connections with their own iwi hapu with them as well and long experience of advocating. They know governance and government ma machinery. Um, I'm pretty wrapped and quite chuffed to have them on board. Uh, you know, you have to be in to win and you talk about uh, you're a party of uh, te tiriti, tangata tiriti and tangata whenua. Yet last election you only stood two Māori candidates in two of the Māori seats. Was that a misstep? Oh, we'd love to have um, more candidates standing in the electorate seats, absolutely. And I'm looking forward to, we've had uh, been able to build on that this, this, this time and we've got more people standing in our Māori electorate seats. So I'm really proud of that. Who's, um, who's we're standing? Always, Any names? So we've, so we've confirmed uh, Elizabeth Kirikiri and Te Tairawhiti, of course. We've got um, Huhana in Taitokero, and we've got more to come, um, but that will come. But look, the Māori electorates are really important. There's, there's no doubt about that, and we'd love to see more support um, in those Māori electorates for the Green Party as well. Any bottom, bottom lines for any future coalition deals? Just making it really clear that it's, it's climate action, and in that, um, that this extreme weather, it has particularly hammered low-income communities and Māori and coastal and rural communities. And part of climate strong climate action is making sure that those who are most vulnerable, those who have the least resource and power, are prioritised in our climate responses as well. And that's what we want to see. We want to see reducing climate pollution, but we also want to see building our communities in a way that they will survive better and prioritising people who need the most support to get that priority as well. Kapai, would you consider a coalition with the National Party? Holy hikama, they'd have to pretty much have surgical transformation to change from who they are right now. Uh, they have been angling to continue fossil fuel exploration, coal and gas. Uh, Maureen Pugh's been denying climate change um, as human activity in the first place. So, you know, we're focused on what the Greens are offering to people and that um, any political party will have to come with strong climate action. Nats and an ACT support government, pretty crappy, pretty
pretty crappy track record on climate change. So, I mean, sure, if people want to hold out for that, but um, we're not hopeful at all that they're going to completely change their tune. Ka ati, tēnā koe, um, co-leader of the Green Party, Marama Davidson. Kia ora. Kia ora, tēnā koe, tēnā koutou. Hoi anō, kia tahuri atu te aro aro i nai nei ki te taumata tau tō heto o mata i tēnei rā. Let's talk to our panel now. When it comes to free legal advice, she's everyone's favourite auntie, AU2 to Dean of Law, Kylie Quince. And when you're in trouble with the law, you've probably been taking advice from this uncle, <laughs> former Minister of Māori Affairs, Tau Henare, tēnā kōrua. Kia ora. What did you make? Do you think there's a possibility there's a coalition with the Nats? No, no, not going to happen, eh? It's not going to happen. Um, she nearly swore. Yeah, look, I, I, you know, there's a lot to... You, you've got to put it in, a, in the, into the context of, of the battle that's in front of mm. us. And they've got to make sure that the, the 11 that they've got, they keep. Mm-hmm. And hopefully for them, um, that they get a couple more. Yep. Um, because there's, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's strength in numbers. And the more you've got, the more you can say to your big partner, hey, you need us, and this time we're not going to... Um, be treated like you just treated us then. Do they have to have a few more rules in there? Oh, no, it's not about rules, mate. It, it, uh, me, it's about understanding the game. And I thought that um, it was a bit dirty of, of Labour to just get rid of all the, uh, the, the, the green policies um, without too much consultation. Mm. You know, I think that if you wanted to build a relationship going forward, you would have at least sat down, let's go through these things, and then and then done what you did. What do you make of Marama's kōrero there? No surprises there. You know, all, all on message, we know what they stand for, and, and the, the recent happenings of the last week has actually meant that each it's now much clearer. It's a classic MMP move. Now we know exactly who stands for what, and... You know, I mean, as she said and as Toe said, you know, it's hard to be to want to be friends with someone that doesn't want to be friends with you back. <laughs> it doesn't really so, give them any no. options, though, does it? Because there's only really one real option for them. So but again, kind of that's not showed, news. Sh- showed all their cards. Yeah. Well, you know, they're challenging, you know, parties to come to the table, but you've really only got one option. But I think that was always the case for the Greens, yeah. perhaps yeah. less so for the Māori Party, but always for the Greens. It, it, uh, it's like this. The Labour Party doesn't need the Greens. Watch out when they do need the Greens. That's when you will see some huge is, shifts. Is there anywhere else that they could be where they could have strength like cross benches? Oh, you, you could. Um, and it's fun. Um, and, it, and it depends on how many, how many uh, people that you've got. I mean, look, at the end of the day, Labour doesn't need anybody right at this moment. Next election... They may, they most probably are going to have to have one or two parties, mm. or, or or different numbers, and that's when it'll get interesting. So they talk about you know having some alliances or s- some similar policies with the Maori Party. The Party Maori at the moment, sometimes polls three. They're polling about eleven at the moment. That's a good block. It's a good chunk. Could they do something on the cross benches together? I think they could, um, but I, I think the key to them is I think they need to win a seat. Uh, and, and that looks pretty good with Tamati saying that he's uh, now retiring from um, from contesting uh, Rawiri's seat. So, yeah, I, th- I think they're looking pretty good. Yeah. Um, what do you make of the revelations this morning uh, around lobbyists? You know, one day you're a lobbyist and the next day you're the chief of staff for the Prime Minister's office and you're dumping a whole lot of policies that you may or may not have had something, some yeah. lobbying to do with them. We're, a, we're such a small country... Um, and the talent pool uh, is is not that great, and and so I, I mean, in a country of 300, 400 million people, you've got lots of people to pick, choose from. So in the states, you can have anybody. Over here, there's only five million of us. You know, we're only small, small, um, and I don't think that we should get in get ahead of ourselves in penalising people when they move from one job to another. Does, do, doesn't that mean, though, that we need stricter controls? Because if you look at that investigation by RNZ, you almost can recognise every single person who's in those lobbying groups as somebody that's worked either in the Prime Minister's office or in one of the ministerial offices. Should we have a cooling down period? Well, it's pretty standard in other, in other jurisdictions, but yeah, I appreciate what Toe says. It's, it's a village. It's really difficult. Restraints of trade in any 
industry in New Zealand are really difficult to enforce because it's a, a much smaller market. Um, so yeah, there must be other means of control though, because the risk of course, is, is as we heard on, on Radio New Zealand this morning, is that you leave the job, five minutes later you're across the table and you still are able to text, you have the numbers, you have hot intel, mm -hmm. um, that, that is a risk. But how we protect that in such a small place is pretty difficult to figure out. The response by Transport Minister Michael Woods to dropping climate policies is that it won't harm efforts to reduce the emissions. If we take the clean car upgrade scheme, replacing petrol cars with green cars, the policy would actually remove some carbon dioxide from, from, the, from the atmosphere. Do, do you think the minister's being disingenuous? No, I think that um, you got to, you, there's something else going on here, and it's called an election. Yeah. OK? Um, we just had a huge cyclone somebody's going to have to pay for it. And unfortunately, um, you, you know, the team is getting around the cabinet table and saying, oh, crikey, we can't, can't afford this, can't afford that. Look, why don't we just concentrate on cost of living as, as our co-opper for the, for the election? Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to come down to. And the Greens, they're in this mode, that, and, and good on them. Um, they are focusing on their lane, coming uh, for this coming election. So um, I actually think it's, I think it's good because it, it, it sort of galvanises people's minds to what you have to vote for this coming election. It's like a weird, re bad relationship when somebody's mean to the other person, then people feel, I don't know, sympathy or something. Do you think sometimes for the minor parties it works? I think it worked in this case because, um, I mean, I agreed with, with Tony, Toby Manhai's take in the, in the spin-off last week was that, you know, without consultation, as we've heard, that Labour gets angry and pisses off the Greens and the Greens get justifiably angry and they both win mm. because they both get to stick to the knitting, they both get to, to make it clear that this is, this they get to play to their core, core constituencies yep. and their, their core messages. Uh, and that's exactly what Marama has just come out. Shaw has looked great, I think, in the last week. He, he's this is his kaupapa. It's and he doesn't need to talk about all of the other, all of the other things. They, they, they could have they could have done one thing though, and that's hand their warrants back. Ah, uh, mm. yeah, you know, just just as a as a um, principle, a yeah, in principle position. Symbolic gesture. He, he, he had them back. Mm. Yeah, and it well, would we not asked her that she said that we needed to stay. Yeah, there, oh, I don't buy that. Yeah. What about some of the, you know, some of those policies were really important policies like the container return scheme and, um, you know, half a billion dollars to, to fund electric cars. Will they get an opportunity to run those again or are they gone? Look, it's really difficult. As Marama said, we have this United Nations report released this morning. Things are never going to get cheaper. So, yeah, we get that there's a, a current cost of living crisis and we're, we're responding to, you know, some un, unprecedented natural disasters. It's never going to get cheaper. I don't buy Wood's line and, and Hipkins' line that... Um, you know, that these it's are small policies, anything. small policies from a small country. That report makes clear that China and America are only responsible for 30% of the emissions. The rest of them are from small countries. So it's, it's not an excuse to say, because all of those small, small policies from small countries add up to 60 to 70% of the emissions. We've I got guess, to do something about it. I guess this is about, you know, whether it's cost of living for you or climate change. But I mean, how many more examples do we need of climate change? We've just had all of the cyclones and floodings. Yeah, so we had in 1938 as well. Yes. Same one, same one in Esk Valley, same amount of uh, mud, same amount of, except no, you know the difference was? In 38, they didn't have slash. You know, put the, put the responsibility of all the devastation back on those people that caused it, the forestry companies. It's their fault. But that's, what, that's what those policies were about. They were about producer no, responsibility. No, 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 they were, no, they were, no, they, they weren't they about, were a start. No, they were not about uh, uh, saying to the forestry companies, clean your mess up. Not one of those policies was. No, but they were a start in that behaviour of looking at... Did you hear what Greenpeace said this morning? Halve the cow population, you know? Are you serious? This is New Zealand? We have more cows than people. I mean, look... I'm, I'm being a bit disingenuous about the whole thing, but Christ, um, um, how do you think we're going to pay for all of this damage? How do you think we're going to pay for it? You can't go to the IMF and, and say, can I have $50, $50 billion? 
You can't. You've got to pay for it. You also can't put carbon dioxide back into the bottle oh. once it's out. It's hey, it but, but, the but, but that happened when somebody decided to invent the motor car, to use petrol, to use oil. It started back then, and you, ca you can't put that stuff back in the ground either. Do we have a colonial attitude to our economy? <laughs> I'm not sure I understand the question. <laughs> well, do we look at things and value things through a colonial lens? We talk about farming and all those kinds of things. They seem to trump everything. Trump's an interesting descriptor in that <laughs> sentence. Yeah. Especially this so, week. I think, yeah, I think the short answer to that is yes. Tie yeah. old, you know, um, poverty or this prime yeah, no, industry. No, you, you, yeah. you're, you're, you're right. I mean, the, 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 whole, the thing about and I had a discussion with Mrs X this morning about colonisation. And, and and how it how it works, and it's in everything. It's not just you stole our land. It's it's in everything. It's in the court system. It's how we view whaapapa, How we how we view everything. It was also interesting that you know you know on on social media and and other spaces that the Maori response and narrative to to the natural disasters, mm. you know, all these young people say, "Oh, Papa Tuanuku fighting back." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that was kind of interesting. So that that's sort of the counter to the yeah. to the capitalist kind of narrative. Yeah. Hey, but I, I, even I use social media to say, "You do not screw with Mother Nature," because mm. she's going to get you back mm. one way or the other. Let's talk about um, Stuart Nash, Kate Te Waha o Te Ika, Stuart Nash. He's still holding on, albeit ranked at the bottom of the cabinet, after outing himself on radio, boasting about his close relationship with the police commissioner and divulging that he'd called him about an operational matter. Um, he's not a newbie, Toad. Does he not know the rules, or do you think they don't apply to no, him? His, um, his character is uh, get out there and beat your chest with the big, big guns that he has. Um, and and it'll be all right. Um, well, but it, has it wasn't. Been. Yeah, but but it, it has been until he outed himself. And um, I actually think he should have been sacked, the whole gone from cabinet. Um, and I thought, you know, I like Chippy. In fact, on your program, I said I you loved did, Chippy. You did. Um, <laughs> and, and I still like him. Um, but I, but I think it was. Um, I thought it was weak. Yeah, I think you've said in the past that his superpower is that he just gets onto it and he acts yeah. really quickly, mm -hmm. but do you think he's kind of kicked himself because he then didn't? Yeah, he, 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 he dilly-dallied. And, and when you dilly-dally for long enough, you make the wrong decision. Just do it. And he knows he wanted to, but, you know. Kylie, um, three strikes and you're still in. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, I, I think the interesting point is one reading could be that that, that looked weak, yeah. but actually the fact that he didn't have to, and I don't think they're going to pay for it, um, it, it shows that nobody cares what Mark, Mark Mitchell said, um, yep. yeah, and, and, and they didn't have to. So I, yeah, I, I also think it was the wrong decision, but they're not, it's not going to cost them anything. Oh, we'll see. Cause, you know, these, these things, because he's still in Cabinet, mm -hmm. there will be a question every week. Mm. And, you know, it's that how you chop that tree down mm -hmm. uh, is the most important. I agree with you. I mean, Mark will be, um, you know, he, he, he'll, he'll be champing at the bit. Mm -hmm. uh, wahine, uh, wahine is taking the new role. Um, Jenny Anderson, how do you think she'll go? I think she'll go well. She's, she's, got, she's capable. She's got the experience with the police. And she's worked on three particular areas of, of concern. Methamphetamine, responding to offending by Māori, and organised crime. So... She's, she's we'll got the chops. Looking out for her. We did say we were going to talk about the anti co governance tour, so we should. A man from Rafati is doing a tour of the Mutu, rallying support against co governance. Um, what do you make of this, Toe? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I looked at the background story, yes. and he's had an issue with the local Maoris. Um, Up in the and they've had, they've had, yeah, Ngati Kuta, yeah. they've had issues with mm -hmm. him as well. And so that's where his sort of whole basis of um, these bad Maoris, you know. Oh, look. The timing of it, though, is it oh, a little, yeah, little yeah. deja vu? And he's, he's getting a lot of old people because they haven't got bugger all to do else with their day. <laughs> so they go along to these things. They all get all rocked up. And then you, they, they're, they're, uh, they're like the embarrassing nanny on the, on the, um, on the TV. You um, know? They are getting rocked up. Is it free speech or, is, or should it be shut down? Oh, you know, there's a, 
I don't, I don't like the fact that there's a whole lot of cops turning up to, to separate these people, but it's a, you know, it's a bit of live theatre, really. Um, you know, a angry mob of, of boomers listening to a, a failed evangelical real estate agent. Yeah. Um, not I, I, much I, of a threat. Yeah, it? Let, let, let it go. Luxon will be back this week. Uh, he had a bit of a quiet week with COVID last week yep. and he had some bad numbers. Uh, what will this week look like for him? Same. Same. Uh, I, 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 a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of the left are saying that Nicola is going to take over. Now, one thing about the National Party that the left don't understand is they don't do that sort of thing. Mm. Um, okay, they've had well, that. Well, they have. Oh, yeah, but only in the la But that's in the last <laughs> three years. Have, have a... Well, hang on. You you might look up at the ceiling. What happened before Jacinda? Yeah, there was six, six Labour Labour leaders, and one of them bailed because he couldn't handle it and said, "Just look, can you take over?" And thank the Lord, she did. Uh, what do you think? You think um, he'll set out till the election? No, I don't think oh, so. You, oh, you you heard heard it I've got a month. I reckon if, if they're going to do it, they have to do it in the next month. Good oh, you think it'll be in the next me. month? You've been, yeah, talking, the big, you've the been listening to, to, to <laughs> Shane Defoe, haven't you? I love it. The big issue is deputies. Who would you choose as a deputy? Well, who would they? Yeah. I don't think they have anyone that I think is... Oh, come suitable. on. There's, there's, there's 40 of odd people. There's 40 odd. Who? Emphasis on the odd. <laughs> you well, see what I'm up against? I know. But we did hear it here on Mata, and we'll have to come back and revisit this in a month and see if Kylie's right and we're invited back Even if she's show. right, she's going to be wrong. <laughs> Thank you for um, joining me this week. It's been a blast. As always. Kalba. As always. Uh, ko te mata o te ariro, ko te mata o te pene, he koi, he tau ki, e kore e tae te karo. Me ki poro ake te mata, me kiri tuna ake te tangata, tēnei, te wānanga, ka ea i konei, aha ko ngā pātai e reri tonu ana. Kanu te mehi ki te puna whakatonga rewa, me te maangai pāho. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in a fortnight. No hold of mine. Kotereo, te take.